We see the brain as a universe. Uh, everyone has his own uh, universe inside their head and the idea is that this observatory shows images and shows um, the workings, the inner workings of this, uh, this very uh, intriguing organic universe that we all have. Every human brain is different, so it's, it's really difficult to study uh, uh, the human brain. It actually doesn't make much sense. Uh, we're all very different. We all uh, you know, do different things in life. We, uh, we have different personalities. We have different passions. We have different jobs. And uh, that's actually reflected in our brain. And uh, whether it's nature or nurture, whether it is our brain that makes us do what we do, or it is what we do that shapes our brain. I believe it's a bit of both, of course. Uh, we're all very different. So when we, when we started uh, uh, our brain mapping project, we realized that uh, mapping uh, one representative brain was not an option. Uh, just like you couldn't really have one book representing the entire world literature, you cannot have one brain model representing humanity. So we decided instead even though it is a much longer term and definitely a, a, a much more ambitious project, is to create a library of brains. Now the technology has advanced to, instead of a microscope, it's really almost like a very high resolution flatbed scanner. You know, the speed, if you can imagine a document being scanned on a flatbed scanner. The, the technology of digitizing this uh, histological or pathological pathology slides, it's more it's more similar to a flatbed scanner than a microscope. For us, what was important was to accelerate the process of digitizing the materials because when you have hundreds and thousands of slides, you don't want to be held back. Um, and so this, this, this new technology is very important because to us at least is because we, we have very large volumes of slides. and. Uh, you know, the project is ambitious. If you want to archive uh, hundreds of thousands of slides that represent the, the detail in each of these people's brains, we need to create this archive in a, in, a, in, a fast, in a faster way. We know that disease acts at the cellular level and at the molecular level. So MRI is really not enough to, uh, to be able to explain what was happening in somebody's brain when there are symptoms of a neurological disorder. Uh, MRI, though, gives a diagnostic view. What's important is to be able to validate and to match that low-resolution view that we acquire with MRI with the actual tissue, with the actual brain. So the Human Brain Library has the MRI data for each individual, but because these individuals donate their brains eventually, with this also the actual proof, the actual state of the tissue, which we use to explain what MRI saw. So, th so when imagine a patient for whom there is no cure nowadays, uh, 10 years from now, five years from now, two years from now, a doctor who would have, would have a similar patient under his care will have um, available MRI to do a diagnosis, but he will not really know. He can be inside his patient's head. So by comparing his living patient that is here now with a, another who has donated the brain in the past, he'll be able to make predictions. He'll be able to, to give a better treatment.